Let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. Welcome to the Drag Malfoy podcast, made by the fans for the fans, where we talk about fan films, fictions, and theories. My name is Ivy. And my name is Baron LeVay, and we are the Drag Malfoys. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to episode two of the Drag Malfoy podcast. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all for tuning in to listen to episode one. It means a lot. Um, we were really excited to see the numbers increase, which is lovely. It's done better than I expected it to. Absolutely. We're, we're just here with, with the wine. With the wine. And we're actually together. We're together this time, so it's not going to be a nightmare to edit. <laughs> yeah, she said she was dead excited about uh, editing it last time. and um... It took me three days. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it, though. It was fine. Turned out fine in the end. She did her time in Azkaban. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve years of it. <laughs> So, this week we are talking about... Voldemort, Voldemort, Voldy, 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 Voldemort. (laughs) And this is me, sober. (laughs) For now. So in preparation for this, uh, we have watched... Voldemort, Orange... (laughs) Oranges Oranges of the Air. (laughs) Voldemort, Origins of the Air. We, Um, We have read... It is Tom Riddle's Grand Adventure by <laughs> Sir Hiss. Um, and that is our own archive of our own. Mm-hmm. And we've also done some research into some interesting um, slash ridiculous fan theories. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a few written here. I think um, both Baron and I looked at the same website. Possibly. <laughs> we'll see. Possibly. <laughs> Let's have a chat about Voldemort. Okay. So. Good old sneaky boy. Sneaky boy. <laughs> so I always felt that Voldemort was brilliant. Yes. Yeah, definitely. He was, um, a lot of his, yeah, a lot of his power came from knowledge. I feel like it's depicted in the, um, some of the fan fictions that I read mm-hmm. that he was, he used all the, like, it was all books and he yes. read loads of books at school like he was he was a bit of a loner in the orphanage we're not too sure whether he was the same in school or not but he he knew what he wanted he went after it kind yes absolutely very powerful man back in the day when i was a good uh 15 14 year old used to spend my time on like harry potter wiki and tumblr and i don't know where any of this information is coming from and mm. it's true or false but here we are i'm doing the same thing at the age of 24 10 years later Just tried at 31 love <laughs> <laughs> so voldemort origins of the air um i actually found a review for it on um the telegraph website interest the because telegraph i believe it it managed to um rack up 8 million views within two days of it being on YouTube. If I'm remembering the numbers right, it was 8 million within yeah. within a weekend, I believe. That's insane. Yeah, and for a fan-made film that didn't make any money from it because they can't make any money from it, yeah. 8 million views is something else. That's, yeah, that was more than the, the sisters. Yeah. Although um, I do remember when the trailer came out for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was again on Twitter. Um <laughs> And I just remember watching it and being like, I want to see this film so badly. But then again, like all fan-made films get put off for a little bit because they need the funding. And I didn't get around to watching it until just the other day. So it's an Italian film? Oh, I thought it was Spanish. But yeah, sure. (laughs) I I believe it's Italian. I did some research into that. Um... And it's, right, so I think we need to broach the subject of the dubbing before we get any further. Yes, we do. Um, Because what a wonderful film it is, had it not been dubbed really weirdly. It was, yeah, it was really weirdly dubbed. Like, I feel like they were, they were trying to, the, the actors were using English, but I feel like it was dubbed over with English because they felt that their accents were too strong or 
that their English wasn't good enough, and I kind of wish that they just kept it with their with their accents a little bit. Yeah, I would have. I think I would have preferred it because it did distract from the movie a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, this posh voice. Uh, sometimes the voice didn't match the emotion that the character mm -hmm. was um portraying. However, if we if we try and get past the dubbing, yes, and I did get past the dubbing. I yes. watched it twice. I enjoyed it. Same. Um, so we start in Russia, an incredibly dressed woman, like full on warrior stance, tartan around her waist, fur plaits in her hair, like proper Scottish warrior. Moment. Yes, it's 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 yeah, definitely like very the Witcher vibes. Yes, yeah. She's fighting with, with people with, with weird things over their faces. At first, I thought they were Death Eaters. Yeah, I thought they were Death Eaters, like, right back in the day. Yeah, yeah. before they had the fancy masks. Yeah, and I feel like you're probably meant to think that. You're meant to feel like she's the good guy and mm -hmm. they're the bad guys. Yep. Um, and she's asking for, for, a, for an item that we, we don't know. Yes. We, yeah. we don't know what the item is yet. Um, she's asking for it. As we she's, do find out. As she's fighting with these these Russian people that we then discover are Russian auras. Yeah, because uh, at some, I think you do you do discover that it's Russian. Because I didn't at first, I didn't know where they were, and then there's a Russian sign. Yes, and then you're like, ah, it's like evidence room twenty three to twenty five or something. Yes, yeah. something like that. She's captured and dosed with veritaserum. Um, and it, that's all a bit dark and a bit weird the way they do that, so like pulling her arm out and like sticking the needle in. Yeah. It's all it's all a lot more you than can, you would see in a Harry Potter. Film. Exactly, yeah. You can tell it's a foreign made film mm. apart, like so. It's very artistic mm -hmm. in that sense. Beautifully shot, though. Uh, incredibly shot, yeah. So then we discover that this is Grisha McLagan, heir to Gryffindor. Gryffindor. The person that she's talking to with a very strong Russian accent, I feel is possibly the only person that isn't dubbed in the film, um, is General Makarov, who is obviously a Russian or a general um, with, a, with a hideous white contact lens and a scar down one I was going to say, I was like, the contact lens was very obvious. Yeah. <laughs> he looks evil, but he's an aura. He's a little bean that must be protected at all costs. <laughs> Then we see our first glimpse of Tom Riddle at Hogwarts. Yes. As a memory. As a memory, yeah. I was about to say, it's like flashbacks, kind of, to and from. <laughs> that was my flashback noise, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we see him aggressively asserting to Grisha that he will be the greatest wizard ever known. I love how they had the same actress um, playing this flashback when she's meant to be 12. <laughs> Yes, that was also an issue. There were some age issues all the way through, and the age issues when when we see them in the future as well. Like she was like, "I'm a second year student, Tom. I I don't <laughs> know anything about." Like, it's just really quite odd. I was like, was. "You put plaits in her hair to make her look younger." Yeah. <laughs> um. So then we we get we get flash back to the Russian um or a department and discover that. McLagan was trying to retrieve the diary of Tom Riddle. I was about to scroll up on my page of paper there. That's <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Too much time on technology, that is. Yeah. She then goes into discussing the four founders of Hogwarts. So she's explaining why she's after the after the diary, but hasn't actually said why the diary explicitly. Yeah. She starts telling this huge, big story. So she starts talking about the descendants. Um, and we see a flashback too. The, the room of requirement. Room of requirement, yeah. And I found it. I just find it interesting that all four of the descendants were in Hogwarts at the same time as each other. But yes. for the fact of the film, we'll just not talk about that. We'll yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so we've got the Ravenclaw descendant Wigglaf Sigurdsson. I forgot all the names. I didn't know how to spell them. I was like, I'm not going to write them down. I researched them. I'll yeah. I was like, I'll I'll miss. Baron will know. <laughs> we've got Hufflepuff Lazarus Smith. We've got Grif uh, Gryffindor, Grisha McLagan, and then Slytherin, Tom Riddle. Of course. Um, what I did notice is how creepy Lazarus Smith was. Like, obsessing over Grisha, being like, you need to marry me. If I do this, <laughs> you're going to marry me. You're going to marry me. He's it was like, like, I will prove myself and I will find a Hufflepuff um, mansion and we can live in it. Yeah, it was a lot. It was. He was like, 
creepy, creepy, creepy dude. But of course, Grisha fancied Tom Riddle. Of course. Who wouldn't? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they they have a bit of a uh, an argument almost um, about a... who's powerful and who's leaving school this year, etc. It's a bit of a standoff between. And uh... then Tom appears while they're reciting the heir's oath. Ooh. At which point we see lots of testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's challenging everyone to a duel. Lazarus jumps in and throws some spells at Tom. Um, Tom knocks him back and breaks his arm. Grisha's just stood there like, no. Yes. Because she, she likes Lazarus, but like, she likes Tom. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'd like to note that my, um, one of my notes is cinematography. Uh... For what point? Um, I don't know. I think it was when they were going over the mountains and I just love them kind oh, of shots. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I love a drone. I love a drone shot. <laughs> she loves a drone shot. I do. <laughs> <laughs> when we do the drag Malfoy uh, fan film, I'll be like, oh, oh absolutely. Drone. 100%. <laughs> then we see another flashback to the day that Tom is leaving Hogwarts and he has an argument with, with Grisha at some sort of waterfall. It's a lovely waterfall. It is, it is. Um, and she's like, you don't care about anyone. And he's like, bye, Grisha. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, bye, girl. Then we find out that he'd asked uh, Dippet, who was the headmaster at the time for the uh, Defence Against the Dark Arts position. Dippet refuses because he hasn't got enough experience or age yet. Which is fair enough. Yeah. Defence Against the Dark Arts, he must have... Had to experience some form of dark art. Mm. So Tom obviously has had loads of amazing offers of jobs because he was one of the most talented, if not the most talented, student at Hogwarts in his time. And instead he takes a job at Borgen and Burks in the slums of Nocturne, Nocturne Alley. Alley. Yes. So this is going back to when the four of them were in the room of requirement. Um, I just got a little note here. Aberrated in Hogwarts? Can you do that in the room of requirement? Because cause Lazarus goes to Grisha, he just apparated, and then she's like, we're in the room of requirements, stupid. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, you can't apparate in, in Hogwarts, but maybe that's a point. Yeah. Because he was incredibly powerful. That's what I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Is, did he go beyond the the, uh, the magic of Hogwarts, which is mm. an interesting fact. It is, absolutely. Right, so, whilst working in Borgen and Burks, he uh, befriends an old lady. Lovely little lord, I love her. Hepzibah Smith. She reminds us of Trelawney. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. She's an eccentric older lady who is a, by her words, a distant heir of Hufflepuff. But she's directly descendant yes. of Helga. Yes. He's around her house because she's taken a liking to him and he knows that she has expensive things and he has an idea that maybe Lazarus placed the Hufflepuff cup with her. Lazarus was the only one of his, of the heirs to find the heirloom. I think that was their goal while they mm -hmm. were in school was to find each other, to find their house's heirloom. Lazarus was the only one to do that, yes. I believe. So Tom believed that um, it had been placed with Hepzibah. And he would have guessed correctly. Absolutely, because she couldn't resist showing him the Hufflepuff cup. She's like, Tom, look at what I have. <laughs> In a horrible, horrible accent with a horrible, <laughs> horrible dub. Um, it was an awful dub. But then made the mistake of showing him something else that she'd bought from Borgen and Burks years before that. Oh, I was going to say, I was like, if she'd bought it from Borgen and Burks, surely Tom would have noticed it. But no, it was years before he Years came. before that, um, she'd bought it after a an old woman that had been uh, possibly a homeless person had sold this item to Borgen and Burke, who then sold it to Hepzibah. Turns out that this old lady who was possibly homeless was actually Merrip Gaunt, who would be Tom Riddle's mother. And the item was the Slytherin locket. Yes, and he <laughs> seemed... Sorry, I was too distracted there. Um, I think as soon as she mentioned the homeless... Yes. Lady, he got very angry. He did, yes. His eyes went red. Um, One of them lovely pink contacts with her. Mm -hmm. Which like to turn around. 
you know the snake eye contact yes. and then when you blink yeah. it turns it turns yeah because it did that as <laughs> it well did didn't that. it yeah we're just dissing the um the lack of uh budget for <laughs> makeup in yes. this film yes sorry about it but that's that's what we love isn't it makeup so but there is an unbelievably camp moment here so they accidentally knock the um the record player on while they're arguing over the locket and it starts playing some some old music which is lovely and he's he's shouting in her face and she's like no no don't kill me don't kill me you can have all of my fortune and then he uh a vada cadaver sir and at the same time the music hits its crescendo and it goes and it's the most ridiculous thing i've ever seen and then we get a shot of an eye through a doorway and it's the elf. elf, it's the house elf, um, who Tom then um, casts a memory charm on. And the house elf believes that he killed mm. Hepzibah and then takes the blame. But then we find out that the house elf has actually killed himself two days after mm. the death. Um, so there's a, a moment in the... It's just before the big crescendo moment. It's very camp and brilliant. Um where just before he kills, I don't know, Hepzibah. Name, Hepzibah. I'm rubbish at these names. <laughs> you can tell, so this is how, another one you can tell that it's a foreign film because they've used like really odd names apart from Tom Riddle. Yeah, the, yeah. I'm not sure if they do link in. I think Hepzibah is actually on the Harry Potter wiki, so I think she Fair is enough. a canon character. Um, but Lazarus. Yeah. Lazarus. I mean, Lazarus is a biblical name. That would contradict any Chris, any Christianity beliefs about witches. <laughs> it doesn't really work with a character either, because he doesn't come back to life, does he? So uh, He does not, no. no. He's, he's oh, oh, yeah, actually, we haven't mentioned he's dead. So, so... <laughs> <laughs> he died two days ago, love. Yeah, yeah. Tom, <laughs> Tom killed him be- two days before Hepzibah, so... Yeah. But there is a moment bus- just before he kills Hepzibah, and it's... A very good quote. He goes, so this time to ties in. He doesn't like Quidditch yet. He references it all the time. Um, the seeker chases the snitch, and once he has it in his hand, he knows the game has been won. Ooh. Ooh. That's when he know. When that's when he has the locket in his hand, and he's like, "This is my snitch. This is what I was yes. looking for my entire life. Now I can split my soul." He, you know how he usually uses personal items for mm-hmm. the Horcruxes. Did he use the heirlooms because he was friends with all the heirs? Maybe that's his personal cle- collection, connection to oh, the heirlooms. That's a nice thought. That gave me goosebumps, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I like that. So next, we get uh, another... We go back to Russia. Um, and McLagan is still on the Verita Serum and she explains to Makarov, Horcruxes. And she's like, have you heard that word? Do you know what a Horcrux is? And then he acts all scared. He's like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh no, Horcruxes. He doesn't actually say that. It's said in his eyes, I can tell. In his one eye. Yeah, in his one eye. <laughs> <laughs> and she explains that she she believes that the heirlooms are possibly now Horcruxes, but doesn't know for sure. Um, so then we get another do moment and we go to wherever Wiglaf is. Oh, God no. So, right, so here's my little thing here. Right, Tom Riddle spent some time in Albania. Yes. He did, because that's where... And that's where... The Hel- diadem yeah. was, yes. Helena Ravenclaw took it to Albania, yes. I believe. So I wondered, because we're not sure where he is at this point. It's somewhere cold anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, well, we're not sure where McLagan is. Somewhere cold, anyway. So I wondered if it was possibly Albania. Yeah, because the two of them together at this point. Yes, because she visits um, Wiglaf, and that's where the diadem is, and he's Ravenclaw's heir. Yeah, he's trying to find his heir. Not that any of this really matters, but yeah, that's that's the thing that my head... And he looks like a hardcore Viking at this point. He does. He's got like a full <laughs> tattooed scalp. Um, he's got like a huge big beard. He looks like a Viking. He looks badass i i love him he's brilliant he was very dark for a ravenclaw like 
everything about him was really goth. Because at first, when we first met him in the room requirement, I actually thought he was Slytherin for a split second. And yeah. Then I saw the tie. Yeah, me too. And the, there's like this whole big eyeliner thing he's got going on where it's like dripping down his face. It's Living. a bit weird, but I love it. <laughs> Living for it. He's, you know what? He's, he's conforming to the school's rules without breaking them. Mm. So we discover that McLaggen and Tom are both looking for the sword of Godric Gryffindor. And she says, we go back to Russia and she says, Wiglaf tried to stop him, but now he's dead. She was making him a potion as well. She was making him a healing potion. She was, she was, because he was injured. He was, oh. he had an injured arm. Mm. And she says, I'm the only one that can save him. And Makarov says, from what? And she goes, himself. And it's oh. all very emotional. <laughs> the drama. <laughs> So then, then we have the emotional moment before the train leaves. I, yes. went, I went ahead of time before. Um, so we have an emotional moment. We go back in time again to Hogwarts. Um, there's an emotional moment between Grisha and Tom Riddle at the waterfall before he leaves. Um, and he does the whole you are a seeker moment kind of thing. The whole Quidditch thing. I've got an Ivy laughing at me. It's just because the note that I wrote down was life lessons with Tom and the snitch. Life lessons of Tom and the Snitch. <laughs> Maybe that should be a regular occurrence in our episodes. <laughs> I'm just imagining a little jingle where it's like, Life lessons with Tom and the Snitch. That's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to record that. That's happening. So next week, you're ex next, next episode, you can expect a life lessons with Tom and the Snitch. <laughs> um, so I, I found that it was like alluding that she would have to continue to chase him forever. And he knew that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At this point, she still, she still has feelings for him. Yeah, of course. I mean, who wouldn't? He was fit. He, he was very good looking. And I mean, one of the one of the reviews I read from somewhere else, someone, someone was like, why did they make him so attractive? And my first thought was, evil is attractive. Evil is attractive. Because otherwise it wouldn't happen. Yeah. But at the same time, we know, ca canonically, we know that... The Gaunt family were very well known for inbreeding. So realistically, he probably wouldn't have been very attractive. True. Hmm. But his dad's a muggle, so that could have... Con he might have, oh, yeah, possibly, yeah. He might have looked like his dad. Maybe, maybe. Really depends. He shouldn't have been attractive, because of all them genes mixed up in. Mm. But evil is attractive. We know this. He looks like Henry Carvel. Oh, he does. Yes, yeah. he does. Very much so. He's a very attractive gentleman. So then, I don't know if I've missed the Lord, but then we've got the end of the film. Yeah, I've, uh, so yeah, after my life lessons with Tom and the Snitch, I've got the Russian interrogator gives her the diary out of his own pocket. Yes. So he says, I'm going to let you go. Um, you've been a very bad girl. Yes, I'm sorry. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're in trouble. Um... However, here you go. Here's the diary. Get out of my sight. So he unhooks her from all of the... All the bits and all bobs. All of the bits and bobs, the Verita serum. Um, and she's making her way up the stairs. And he goes... He goes, how did you know oh, we had this? How did you know we had this? And she turns around and she goes, I didn't. And then she does something with a wand. And there's a whole load of green... And a bit close up of the eyes. Close up of of, of the terrible contact lenses. Because or oh, maybe I did. Or oh, maybe I did. Yes, that's yeah. the one. Yes, I didn't. Or oh, maybe I did. And we discover that McLagan was Tom Riddle all along. And I've got in big massive letters plot twist camp. Dun 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 dun. Because <laughs> that's exactly what the music does at that moment. Literally, literally. <laughs> and then we don't know what happens to them at the end. No, not a clue. We don't Probably dead. Because it, it scans from that to another beautiful area in the snow. In Russia. So it took me both times watching this to possibly grasp what this meant. Because it yeah, was really abstract. Very abstract. I didn't I didn't really get so it. So there was two guys in the snow and there's a there's a chest and one of them opens the chest and he's like, Oh, there's some bones in here, possibly female, maybe maybe a ritual. Um, and then the younger guy looks distantly away from the camera and he's like, when will this be over? And he's like, this will never end. 
something along those lines anyway. Yeah, it's like evil will continue. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I think those female bones were McLaggen. I, th- I, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, whose are the bones? It's either McLaggen's or his mother's. Yeah, if it's McLaggen's, it, it would result in, in him being the last remaining heir. Yes. Because they're all sense. dead. Yeah. So, I mean, if someone who wrote this film is listening, could you please explain that to us? Because um, we got a little bit lost. Yeah, I do want to know. Also, I do have a little point here. So, obviously, the entire flashbacks were like memories. Has So, was, was McLagan Tom the entire time? So, when she went to go visit Ravenclaw's heir, was that Tom? Did the potion kill Mac- um, Ravenclaw's heir? Oh, that's a thought that I hadn't even considered. Yeah. Did, did so he we're suggesting go... that McLaggen was never McLaggen, like, from, for from most point, of this. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. obviously we're looking back at, we think it's McLaggen's memories, but then it's, then you realise it's Tom. Mm. Can Tom, is is Tom immune to Veritaserum? Which kind of ties in with the fan Probably. Fiction. I would say that Tom, sorry, just pouring wine. Um, I would say that Tom probably is immune to Veritas serum. I think there are there are pieces to say that people who are good at legilimency and oculimency are immune or, or don't submit to Veritas serum as easily. Yeah, they can fight it, use their skills. Mm. But yeah, I once read a Harry Potter fan fiction that, that that suggested that he could bypass Veritas serum. But that ended it. It was all angst anyway. It doesn't matter. It was all, it doesn't matter. It was all angst. <laughs> it was very strange yeah, anyway. Yeah, but that was my thought. Obviously, we thought it was McLaggen the entire way through while we looking at McLaggen's memories. But then obviously when you look back at it, it for the, the killing scene between... Uh, Hepzibah. Hepzibah. <laughs> the killing scene between Hepzibah and Tom was just her and Tom. Yeah. So no McLaggen. Yeah. So was it Tom being McLaggen that entire time through the whole way of the film, apart from during the school days? Because... That's, seen together. that's interesting yeah. I've not even considered that and I like that a lot mm-hmm. hmm. so we read a fan fiction um, and it was very much the early parts of the film it was it, it, went, it, it goes into more detail about his time at Borgen and Burke's yeah. um, it's a very short fan fiction yes. very short Yes, it's only two chapters and I was left wanting more Definitely. A... But I don't think it had been uh, updated since 2016, so I don't think we can expect any more. Unfortunately not. But unless you are listening, Mr. Hiss. Sir, Sir Hiss. Sir Hiss. Unless you are listen- listening, Sir Hiss, from Archive of Our Own, we'd like some more, because I didn't hate it. I Very actually well really enjoyed it. Yeah. So we start off in July the 19th, 1945. Mm-hmm. Uh, World War II's just about finishing i don't know the exact time. Oh, right so i discovered the other day that actually um tom riddle was at hogwarts for the exact amount of time that world war Two was on so That's well he was 1938 and 1945 yeah were his times Ooh. at hogwarts um however there was also grindelwald saga was happening at exactly the same time oh, true because i was wondering whether or not there should have been some crossover between world war ii but actually if the wizards were too busy with grindelwald they weren't going to get involved with exactly, the muggle war yeah. so that is true and i think it was more of a muggle thing in the world war yes anyway i did enjoy <laughs> that the, that i've actually mentioned world war ii because usually it doesn't get mentioned mm. Don't um, mention the war. It's a, it's a, it's a, the war of... <laughs> 1912. <laughs> so we'll start the story in Borgen and Burke's. Mm-hmm. And get a good description of all the kinds of stuff that they have. It sounds like somewhere that I would frequent, to be honest. It sounds like a, a decent shop. Interesting. Yeah. It sounds like my living room. <laughs> <laughs> True, I am here right now, and it's it's true. Um, Tom Riddle works in there, um, but the owners aren't in there that day. Borgen and Burke are not in there that day. Um, there's pictures. Oh, so so there's a picture of a cursed necklace that was like sketched on the desk or in a book. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm looking far too much into this. I'm like, was that the one that Drago tried to give Dumbledore? See, I thought that. I thought that as well. Yeah. I did think it. I was like, hmm. See, I'm overthinking a lot of things. I don't think you're overthinking. I think the people who write it are overthinking and then hoping that everyone else overthinks as well. True. That is true. Um, a customer arrives and Tom is instantly like, a customer. Wait, what's your rush? What's your... Yes. <laughs> I thought that, yes. <laughs> because, you know, Mrs. Lovett's pie shop is definitely... Borgen and Bergs. Borgen and Bergs. <laughs> <laughs> This woman looks very rich, high-born, a bit of a slag with her dress. <laughs> Leaves nothing to the imagination as what... A uh... bit of décolletage, yes. <laughs> a total slag. <laughs> um, she wants a conversation piece for her parlour. Mm. And what do we think is meant by a conversation she piece? She wants to curse someone. Yes, Maybe essentially. Yeah. Imagine a husband. Just like, wants to curse my husband. She wants to be a, a, a murder marriage husband. Uh, murder yeah. marriage. With lots of money. Yeah. She wants, to have, she yes. wants his money. Um, he tries to show her a necklace. He tries to flatter her at this point. She's a rather large lady. Um, shows her a necklace that shrinks and chokes the wearer, but she doesn't seem impressed by that because she herself is wearing a pearl necklace that is practically choking her. Yes. Yeah. It's just like that snooty little upturn, like, oh, no. This is good. I'm just going to mention a lot of stuff because it's referenced later on in the um, fic. Um, bloodthirsty hooks and saws are hanging from the ceiling. Um, they walk into the back of the shop for more dangerous items, a bit like the back of Anne Summers. Um, Sounds like bliss. <laughs> <laughs> um, they also have an in in fairy in fairy. Yeah, in, a, in fairy in isles. Fairy, yeah. In fairy, yeah. In a, in a box. It's reference for later. Not that it makes any much of a difference, but but um, it is referenced several times. Yeah. yeah. Shows her an alluring bronze vase that looked uh, that lo it's locked away for good reason. Because when you touch it, your arms wither. Ooh. It's a very excruciating <laughs> death, which is not happy with that one either. I mean, who would be happy with an arm withering vase? <laughs> she might be. Who knows? Well, she's not. Again, she isn't happy, but she wants something a bit more subtle. She wants. Uh, she goes to a, a silver chalice with a subtle curse. Whoever touches it receives ever-increasing bad luck until they eventually die. And you know what this made me think of? Mm. And I, I've had this conversation before and everyone always forgets it. So basically, I have a massive fear of sponge. And, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I... I can't cope with sponge. I do know And this. this is because... This is because... Back when I was a lot younger, and probably well before you lot were born... Um, I read a Goosebumps book called It Came From Beneath the Sink and it was about a sponge that increased people's bad luck and it made people die and it was horrific and then I watched the Goosebumps episode of it and it made it worse <laughs> and that's exactly where my head went that this chalice was the gruel from Goosebumps anyway oh interesting I love that <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where we're going with this story I was like sponge chalice <laughs> But it's not just it's not just every sponge, it's just a certain type of sponge. It's called a gruel. A gruel. That that kind of sponge. <laughs> <laughs> um so Tom lies, he says it's part of a set. Um, just to try and up the price. Yeah. And and she's interested. She is. He ramps it up to five hundred and ninety nine galleons from four hundred and fifty nine, but can discount it to five so he, he changes the price magically. Um, to 599 but he says you can discount it to 500 yes so that's a saving of 99 galleons oh my god there's a lot of bargaining she, she doesn't want to take it at first but then he goes to turn away and he's like she's like i'll take it we'll take the lot <laughs> um tom so she, he sold it to her tom pocketed the leftovers for himself yes to pay his rent so there was like 130 galleons or something. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out Burke was actually there. Mmm. Dun, dun dun dun. And he witnessed him pocket the money. Not a very happy man. He's. We're told that he's at least 100 years old. As we know, wizards live longer than normal humans do. And he goes on at Tom for disobedience and thievery. Thievery. Thief. Um... 
bit of back and forth and Tom tries his best to reason with Burke. Um, Burke's not having any of it. Um, Tom even offers him like a thousand galleons and that's it and Burke's like no. Um, because we know that if something were to come up then Burke would probably have favour in trial because most of the clientele is part of the ministry. Yes, of course. As we know. Um, even even offers the diadem. He does, he does. He offers, yeah, Rowena Ravenclaw's mm -hmm. diadem. But was it Horcrux at that point? Ooh, that's a thought. Because he does say he'd offer the diadem, but then a couple of weeks or two days later, Berg would mysteriously die and he would get the diadem back. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All about the Horcrux theories mm. today. Anyway, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Burke shots, shoots a shot. <laughs> shoots a shot? He shoots Shoot, one of those shots. Well, he shoots one of those shots in an attempt <laughs> to kill Tom. Like, it's a definite kill move. Mm -hmm. We're most of a bottle of, of, of wine down now, by the way, yeah. folks. Not as drunk as we were on last Monday, though. No, not at all. The live was chaotic. It was something. <laughs> um, but now I have moderators for my lives. Yes, I had noticed that. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. No. Until just the other day. And mm -hmm. you weren't in the live, otherwise I would have made you a moderator. But um, I'd like people come in and the world, like, I get all the things where it's like, you're a chav, and I'm like, <laughs> bye. But I was in a rush <laughs> that day, so I was like, I need a moderator. So it's like, click, click, click. It's odd. Cool though. Back to Tom even offers no, I've already said that. <laughs> Tom offers the, the diatom. The diatom, oh, oh my, my god, god. guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a mention of Dumbledore being suspicious of Tom and Norton. Don't, don't, don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> I get that stuck in my head constantly. Yeah, me too. Hashtag TikTok. Hashtag TikTok. Um, yeah, Dumbledore's very suspicious of Tom and noting that the battle would come to his attention mm -hmm. um, and also would get Tom thrown in Azkaban. Mm -hmm. This kind of contradicts the fan film because later in this fiction it says that Dumbledore's kind of um, taken away all prospects of Tom ever having a successful career. Yes, yes. But was don't like but if this is speaking from as if Dumbledore knew exactly what was going to happen with Tom. Well, we know that Dumbledore was a manipulative bastard, oh, so yeah, uh, it's very. I, I think it's highly likely that Dumbledore knew exactly who Tom was from oh, the beginning. Yeah, there's a Sorting Hat as well. Maybe the Sorting Hat did. Yes, and we know that Dumbledore and the Sorting Hat were very close. <laughs> So there is a um, mention about getting help from an ancient and normal family, i.e. the Blacks. Mm. So there is mention of the Blacks here. Um, anyway, a big fight breaks out, as, as we have previously mentioned. Um, the Inferi, the Inferi, the Inferi gets let loose, but mm. not for very long. It's literally just like, boom, he's let loose and then Burke's like, Confringo! Gone. Gone. <laughs> Poof! <laughs> <laughs> You're a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the gold powder. Uh, Tom gets shot with a hex, but it doesn't work. Oofed. Because he's got protection from two Horcruxes at this point. Mm -hmm. And he wears an amulet. He does. Which um, protects him from battle. Which, in this version of Harry Potter, this world, all the wizards and the witches wear this jewellery that's meant to protect them. And I don't know if that's true. Yeah, I mean, I, I've i read many fan fictions where there are amulets yeah. and necklaces that, that stop people from, from being harmed in, mm. in battle. But I'm not sure if it's canon. Yeah, because it does say in the fiction that it's a bit of a myth. Yeah. That some of them don't really work for very long. Yeah. Um... Battle carries on and it gets rather intense. Um, both wanting to kill the other. Um, Burke shoots bones and hooks. The hooks and the saws, the bloodthirsty ones, there and there. They get thrown Tom's way. Oofed. Some giant scorpions. Oh, can um, it be? Can it be risking those scorpions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it's all looking very bad for Tom at this point. Until Burke makes a slip up. Due to, probably due to his old age, he's over 100. Mm. Um, and by his own mistake, got himself strangled by some magical guts. Of course. Because <laughs> that's what you find in Borgen and Burke's, is some guts hanging from the ceiling. Magical ones. Magical ones. <laughs> that strangle him. And just to make sure that the lack of air wasn't enough, Tom then stabs him with some glass. Yes, yes, <laughs> this, this, this shard of glass that he's very concerned about afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, there's a little quote, you say, you should have taken my offer, Mr. Burke. Oh, you Ch should have taken my <laughs> offer, Mr. Burke. Which is such a villainous thing to do, isn't it? When <laughs> someone's dead, they're like, you should have done this. <laughs> but you didn't. <laughs> um, he made sure no one was around, tested different charms. But also got us thinking, like, he tested for an invisibility cloak, but it's... There's a lot of mentions of invisibility cloaks. From our knowledge of the actual Harry Potter universe, is there just one or is there many? I don't know, because again, I've read lots of fan fictions where there are more than one invisibility cloak, but I feel like canonically there's it's just the one. It should be just the one, because it's Death's cloak. Mm. Unless Death's feeling very generous recently. Yeah, canonically I think there's only one, so maybe it is the same one. Possibly, possibly. Because at this point... James Potter wouldn't have been at school yet. True. Um, and it came from James, didn't it, to Remus to Harry. Was it Remus to Harry? Dumbledore I don't know. to Harry? Dumbledore to Harry. Because Harry got Maybe it. Maybe I read that in a fan fiction. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like James had it first. I feel like James had it. Yeah, I think James had it. And I'm going to have to research this. Got given to Dumbledore and then Dumbledore yeah. gifted it him at Christmas. Yes. His first year, of course. Um, but yeah, that just got me thinking. I was like, surely there can't be more than one. Tom Riddle and Harry Potter are linked intrinsically, so... True. That is true. That is true. Where we end the chapter with, time to call Wahlberger. <gasps> time to call Wahlberger. Uh... Always time to call Wahlberger. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, call Wahlberger See, this is, this is what interested me, though, because... All the way through the first chapter, I was convinced by the description, uh, the way she was acting, that his customer was actually Wahlberger. Oh, interesting. Mm. No, apparently. Mm. Um, so we learn that Tom and Wahlberger have been in cahoots. Cahoots? Cahoots! <laughs> since school, when Wahlberger got him to do things for her, like theft or even dog rituals. Mm. Uh, Tom became an illegal potion seller in Hogwarts to Orion. He was a drug dealer, he was, essentially. He was essentially a, a drug dealer of potions that will make you cleverer in yes. exams, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Memory potions, yeah. Yeah, and Tom used this to blackmail Wahlberger because <clears throat> no one knew that Orion was buying potions yes. to pass tests. Yes. Wahlberger wasn't too pleased. Um... The Blacks wanted Tom... This is where it gets interesting. Mm. This is where it gets interesting. The Blacks wanted Tom to take a vow for him to do their bidding in exchange for him to gain power, um, which in the fan fiction says that it's regular for ancient and noble pure-blood families to get yeah. someone like that, yeah. of a, a half-blood or a muggle-born, to do their bidding and then get them into power, but only do their bidding to a certain extent where they'll end up in Azkaban. I think, I think this is, um, it's, I don't necessarily think it's canon, but I think it's historical. Yeah. So I think this happened, obviously not within wizards and muggle-borns or whatever, but I think it was... It must have happened throughout history. Yeah, I think it's happened throughout history, yeah. yeah. It seems like the, this person's done a lot of research into... Yeah, I know explicitly with within um, families who used to get people who were, were mediums or mm -hmm. psychics or clairvoyants yeah. um, and pull them into the family, get them to do things for them, yeah. um, push them up through society so they were well known, but then still expect things from them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And basically abuse their own power. Yes. Uh, so while Berger arrives at Bogen and Burke's after being summoned, Tom doesn't tell her what it's about. It's for you, she's like, you need to be here urgently. She instantly regrets this decision because she, her DNA, I guess, is now in the crime scene. Mm -hmm. And she now knows that she needs to destroy all the records of a duel happening and everything like that. 
um because she's at the scene of the crime mm-hmm so there's a bit of back and forth between Tom and Waldberger. Um, she's trying to get him to take a vow. Mm-hmm. But he's ext- having none of oh, it. He does not want to do this vow, and rightly so. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. There's a back and forward, back and forward, and Tom is increasing his offer. Waldberger's like, no, I want a vow, I want a vow. Tom gets his own way. Mm-hmm. Eventually, he ends up take um so he ends up giving her six hundred galleons, half the shop's loot, and three favors. Absolutely. But the three favors are probably what she will I deem think, the most valuable. Yeah, I think she thought that one of the favors could be the vow. So she basically blows up the shop. Mm-hmm. With Tom inside it mm-hmm. as the part of the um alibi. Then we see Tom wakes up in Saint Mungo's. Two auras are there for questioning and... And he's like, she's done a better job than I was hoping because I feel like shit. Yeah. <laughs> he feels rough. Right? I mean, a building's just blown up on top yeah. of him. Um, they give him Veritas serum. Mm-hmm. And this is where it kind of ties in with the film. Mm-hmm. But he's so strong at occupancy that he's immune to it or he can fight it. Mm-hmm. So they ask him about his crimes and he can basically say that he didn't kill her and he walks away with just a fine because he tells them that he's got minor crimes yes yeah so he, he knows that like they're going to know that he isn't without guilt of something yeah so he's like i better throw these minor crimes in there just to make it look like i'm not able to um He's not perfect. Yeah, and, and I'm like, because they'd be questioning whether or not the Veritas serum was working on him if yeah. he was able to say, no, I've never committed a crime in my life when he works in Nocturne Alley. Exactly, mm. exactly. And I think, I don't think anyone's been absolutely innocent in their entire not. life, you know? No. That's us talking as if I've murdered someone I haven't. Um, no, 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 no. No, <laughs> but don't give me the Veritas serum. <laughs> So he talks about, so then we're going to talk about how expensive the wizarding world is. Wisdom Britain yes. against Muggle Britain. Mm-hmm. And um, Tom stays in Wizarding Britain because of Dumbledore. Yes. Dumbledore's kind of ostracized. Ostracized. Yeah, ostracized him from the wizarding world. Basically, he can't get any decent job mm-hmm. because of Dumbledore. Um, so he's like, he's never going to make his move to Muggle because Muggle Britain because if he's, I don't want him to push him out, push us out of this world yeah. altogether. Um, again, they mentioned the war. It's over with Germany, but not Japan, mm-hmm. which I enjoy. A bit of history in there. So he he's, hasn't got a job anymore. He's run on his savings. He's got mm-hmm. to give 600 galleons to Walburger. Mm-hmm. Um, and the three favours, don't and, forget those. And the three favours, he also has to pay for his hospital fee. Yeah, and his fines. Yeah, no NHS. No in the NHS, world. No, none of that. <laughs> Tories. Um, he can't go to the Blacks for, to sponsor him because they would more than likely want a vow in return. Yeah. Then, this is where it gets interesting. I loved this part. Like the Goyles are to Malfoys. Yes. Yes. So the Goyles are... The Goyles took a vow to the Malfoys. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if this is canon, but I enjoyed it. I live for that. That would explain, I mean, the Goyles hanging around with Drago almost instantly. Yeah, I believe um, that the the Goyle, that the, the, the Goyle's father was in Malfoy's year. Yes. Um, and they were both Death Eaters. Death Eaters. They were, yeah. So it would be interesting to find out if that was canon. Oh. I Although like, I don't want to ask her, but... We're, yeah, we're not going to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> but that is such a good theory. Yeah, it is. Just, oh. Totally. I also, I wrote here, I feel like Tom would despise having to go to Muggle Britain for food, but that's what he does because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. So it's more of a survival thing than anything. Yes. Um, there was something about it costing, like, absolute pennies compared to yeah. the Wizarding World's. Yes, food. definitely. And then my final... Like, it would cost him less to eat out at a restaurant than it would for him to buy his food in, in the Wizarding World. Yeah, yeah. A month's worth of food is, like, six galleons in, in the Wizarding World, whereas, like, it's... Oh, 20 quid. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. 20 quid in the Muggle World. Uh, Dumbledore, this is my last note, 
is uh, Dumbledore being a dick as always and casting out this kid. Um, could he see the bad or did he just choose to not act on changing it if he could? And that's where we end on it. That's where we end. And I, I really wanted more. I did want more because it was beautifully written and it was really detailed and you could see that there was something that it was really going for and then it just didn't. We struggled a lot to find a fan fiction this we, week. We did because we, we even thought about maybe, and I mean, maybe you can maybe you can uh, comment for us. Um, we thought maybe we could go into teen rated because we've been trying to keep it PG. Obviously, I know that a lot of you are probably teens and up, so maybe yeah. teen rated might be okay for you. But it was difficult to find a Voldemort fan fiction that wasn't a, a relationship. Yeah. yeah. So if you're happy for us to go with teen rating and up, that's fine. Obviously, I know that some of you are asexual and that's fine also. And we would never go into detail. That's nope. totally okay. Yeah. Because like the Lucissa one last week, we just kind of went dot, dot, dot. That happened. Yes. We wouldn't mention anything like that. No, uh, we wouldn't want to make anyone uncomfortable. Um, but if you're happy for us to go to teen rated and maybe fall into ship content... Yeah, but um, nothing too extreme. Nothing, no, nothing too extreme. Nothing illegal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a lovely noise. <laughs> just, just spat on my wine. <laughs> I think she nearly choked on her wine. Uh, <laughs> nothing illegal. Um, everything above board. If you are happy for us to go to teen rated and ship content, let us know because we know what our next um, episode is. So that might be interesting. I'm very excited for next week. Yes. Fan theories. Boom. Voldemort fan theories, right? There are a lot more Voldemort fan theories than there are for the Black Sisters and the Malfoys. Very much. It was easier to find. Yes. And I think that's why we ended up on the same page. It probably <laughs> did. I just typed it into Google and I was like, ooh, 13 yes. fan theories. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I had 26 fan theories, so it might be slightly different. But oh. I also found a YouTube um, video that went through the fan theories ah, as well. That's cool. Would you like to start? Go on, throw one. So throw one in there. The first one that I came across was is something that is um, a fan theory that has been going around for years and years and years and years because I remember reading this and being like, oh my God, yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Trelawney detected the Voldemort in Harry. Yes, I read that one, yes. It's my fi one of my favourite fan theories. So she tried to predict Harry's birthday when you first see her class mm -hmm. in the series um saying that he was born in midwinter but harry was born in july um everyone laughed at her of course because like ah, stupid teacher who can't predict divination um when everyone knows that harry potter was born in july because of prophecy yeah literally but Voldemort was born in december at the end of December, mm -hmm. midwinter. Midwinter. Pagan calendar, midwinter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she predicted the Horcrux before anyone knew about it. Well, probably Dumbledore knew about it, but you know. Um, Dumbledore's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I really enjoy that fan theory. That's one of my favourite ones. I agree. I enjoy that one. And I enjoy the fact that, because we know that it was her prophecy. So, so she, as well. yeah, and she knew when Harry's birthday was. Surely she knew. She must. She would have had to. He's one of the most famous people in mm -hmm. the Wizarding world. Because of his birthday, because of yeah. when Voldemort attacked. Like it's interesting to think that. Yeah. Yeah. I think Trelawney is a very underrated character. I fucking love Trelawney. I agree. I mean Emma Thompson anyway. Oh. Anything of Emma Thompson and 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 Alan Rickman in the same <laughs> love action. I was love actually say, love breaks actually. my heart. That's the other film we were talking earlier about things that made us cry. Love actually is the other film that makes me cry for that specific moment. Joni oh. Mitchell, the album. Oh, it kills me every time. Every time. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. But here we are. My first fan theory is that JK is Voldemort. Now, everyone's going to go, okay, with everything that she said recently, that could be well true. However, here's something interesting. This is backed by Stephen King. <laughs> Who she recently unfollowed on Twitter. <laughs> she recently unfollowed on Twitter, yes! Yes, I was going to mention that. So, yes. Um, so, seven Horcruxes, part of a soul in each book. Oh, I know, right? 
Um, and those books will live forever. That is what Stephen King said. I love Stephen King. Yes. But she unfollowed Stephen King recently on Twitter for stating that trans women are women. Trans women are women. Trans women are women. Let's not get political, but JK is trash. Yeah. So that's that's my first fan theory. JK my, my is um, Voldemort. <laughs> my Umbridge agrees. <laughs> Umbridge does agree. <laughs> Umbridge is an ally. <laughs> if you've seen the, if you've heard the last episode, not, this is not me being an Umbridge sympathizer. I despise her. This is just a joke, by the way. Yes, <laughs> opinions are all our own and no one else's. <laughs> I genuinely don't think Umbridge is an ally. That was just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Um, Voldemort can't use legitimacy to read love and thoughts. Yes, I read that one. That's interesting. And that, yeah. that leads back to what we said earlier about um, the, the love potion. The love potion that his mother used against his father. Yeah. Mm. So he didn't know that Severus or Narcissa were betraying him. And he would have checked three times. I mean, um, Snape says explicitly in the book, Voldemort almost always, almost always knows when he's being lied to. Yeah. Almost always. Yeah. Not always. Not always. Not always. Not always. <laughs> Almost always. <laughs> um, so they were acting out of love mm -hmm. for lying to him, Lily and Draco. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 for some reason, I don't understand why I wrote this, but personally, I said, personally, I think it's a bit bull. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can't read love and thoughts. I think it's just the power of love that prevents him from doing so. Okay, yeah, I get that. So you know how, like, Lily, the power of love protected Harry in mm -hmm. the start, the power of love. Which he wasn't expecting. Yeah, because it wasn't love and thoughts that they were given off. No, and it was old magic. It was old magic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thoughts that he, he should have learned from it, but he didn't. No, he didn't. But also, I think, adding to that, we've got, we, we misunderstand Narcissa's level of occlumency. Yes. I think she was a master occlumens, and I think... I think that probably runs through the entire Malfoy family because it's had to. Yeah, I was going to say, it's mentioned that Bella's a very skilled uh, legitimate, but never Narcissa. Mm -hmm. But she must have been. And even even irregardless of the loving thoughts theory, mm -hmm. there surely would have been other things that she would have had to have kept from Voldemort in this entire... Uh, you're looking at, what, two decades almost, in which yeah. her husband was part of the Death Eaters. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. There are things that she was going to have had to have kept secret. Yeah. And not all of that would have been based on love. Or would it have? Would would that have been... Maybe out of love for Lucius? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, of course, we know that Snape was a master of Because mm -hmm. he taught Harry. Maybe that's why he taught Harry. Maybe. Because it was out of love for Lily. Yeah, because we know he didn't enjoy it. Oh, God, no. Absolutely not. Out of love for Lily, he taught Harry Oglemancy, which is why Voldemort couldn't get through to Snape. Mm, but interesting. again, it's not that he can't read love and thoughts. I think it's just the power of love. Very old magic. Yes, absolutely. My next one. And this, I think, because of the website I was looking at, this is an outdated theory. My next one is Nagini is Voldemort's mother. I, oh, I came across this one. It's yes, at the very end. But of... we know now... Yeah. I mean, do we know now? We know now, ish, um, that that Nagini wasn't Voldemort's mother. Yeah. Um, that she was in a circus. She was in um, in Fantastic Beasts, uh, the Crimes of Grindelwald. We get introduced to Nagini in the human form. She is in a circus because she can transform into a snake. Yes, and then she gets stuck in that. Is that, gets... is that what happens? Because yes. I've not seen Fantastic um, Beasts. I don't think we got to that point yet in the films. Okay. I think you do see it. You do get introduced. She's a blood curse which can transform her into a snake. Um, I've only seen it the once, I will admit, and that was when it came out in the cinemas. Oh, so actually... When I was on the Harry Potter wiki the other day, I noticed there was a correlation between Voldemort and the Scarmanders. There oh. is a there is a familial link between um, the Riddles, the Gaunts, and the and the and the Scarmanders. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, 
I've got something written here and I'm going to read it out because I, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I, I can't really read in advance because there's so much of it. Um, she just, just, just for reference, she just showed the microphone, her book. <laughs> yeah. And, and you. <laughs> and me. Oh yes, I'm here as well. <laughs> so in Harry Potter and the Half of Prince, we get the following passage. Um, I remember she said to me, I hope he looks like his papa. And I won't lie, she was right to hope it because she was no beauty. And then she told me he was to be named Tom for his father and Mavolo for his... F Tom for his, mother, his father and Mavolo for her father. Yes, we know a funny name, isn't it? We wondered whether she came from a circus. That's a passage from the Half-Blood Prince. Oh, okay. So that links, I quite like it that. It links in with if, with Fantastic Beasts, yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. And then Nagini obviously worked in the circus, was in Europe in December 1926 when Voldemort was mm. born. What explains fondness for snakes. Mm-hmm. And in a couple of fire, Voldemort drinks Nagini's venom to regain his strength, which oh, like breast like, milk, like breastfeed, and yeah. Okay, okay, that's that's interesting. That's more interesting that because I just went no, fuck that. I'm not reading that. Oh, I wrote it all down. I was like, this is interesting. This, mm. yeah. Uh huh. Um, next one I've got is so this one kind of ties in with yours. We've discussed this so. Baron found a theory about how Horcruxes are made. Oh, yes. So mine's slightly different to what Baron's has got. So if you want to see yeah, yours first. Let's go with that one. So this theory, and I'm pretty sure it's it's a very famous theory, is that the Horcruxes are created, the last step in creating Horcrux is cannibalism. So we know the process of creating a Horcrux involves murder, a spell, and an atrocious act. Now, it was never gone into what this atrocious act was, but this act made JK's editor sick when she explained it. And also, within the books and the films, Hermione and Slughorn both react in a similar way. They they, they feign illness because of what this atrocious act is. Yeah. Now, within the, 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 the franchise, the entire franchise, um, we've got racism, we've got child abuse, we've got murder, we've got torture... And none of those things created a reaction mm -hmm. like the way that this atrocious act does. So what could this atrocious act be? And that does suggest to me that cannibalism, cannibalism throughout history has been um, associated with gaining strength through uh, strength or power um, from consuming the flesh of the dead. Yeah. So that I thought was really interesting. And JK is never... Um, never released it. No, she's never said exactly what it was. There's obviously something there. She's created something. She know she knows what this atrocious act is, but has never said what it is. Uh, maybe that's because this is a children's book. Yeah, <laughs> I want to know. Mm, um, but I like the idea that it's cannibalism. Yeah. Um, I think it adds to the darkness of it, and I think she probably could have added it later on because by the time people read the read the later books, when she was releasing them, I I was a child when they were released, ish. Um, <laughs> not as much of a child as Ivy, but I was a child. Uh, um, when was the first one released? I can't remember. I think I was ten, maybe. That's oh, so why I was like one. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's maybe ten or eleven. Um, by the time the last books came around. I was 16, maybe 17. I, okay. I should have looked up these dates. I was a lot older, 15, 16, 17, some, somewhere along those lines. Yeah. So I would have understood that concept a bit, a bit better. And I think, generally speaking, people who read the books now yeah. start at about the same age yeah. as the characters start. Uh -huh. And you grow up with them in general. So I feel like this... Plus, I think you're no longer innocently minded at like th from the age of like fifteen onwards. Absolutely not. I mean, if you're from Jarrah, you're not innocent minded from the age of twelve. <laughs> but <laughs> I think she could she could have alluded more to it, um, and it would yeah. have been more accepted by the the fandom yeah. because they were older by that point. I mean, I'm not going to contact her now, but I might contact her editor. So I came across a theory that was very similar to Baron's. It did mention the cannibalism. But it also said Horcruxes are, Horcruxes are created with a kiss. 
Ooh. Says, um, so there have been th various theories that the terrible act must that must be done to create a was cannibalism. However, some people believe that it was through a kiss. So kissing a dead person. Oh, like necrophilia. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, to, to transfer part of your soul that would be considered terrible. It's also in line with how the Dementors. Dementors. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. That's interesting. Exactly right. But that wouldn't make an editor sick. Exactly. And when he killed Lily. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Voldemort would be like, oh, well, time, let's, yeah. Yeah, well, this is, this is the other thing, because he killed many, many people. Yeah. But I'm sure he didn't go and eat Lily Potter. But I, this this also links to another thing, is that, that, that Harry was an accidental Horcrux. He was, yeah. Yeah, so... There must have been another terrible act. I don't know, you know, unless... Ugh, it was just dark magic. Maybe because it was the magic of Lily, mm, the, the old, old, magic. old magic, that Voldemort didn't mean to create a Horcrux, but didn't kill Harry, so had to split his soul. Maybe. Ooh, interesting. We'll see. My second to last one is, what is Voldemort's bogart? Ooh. And JK, I believe, has agreed with this one, is that Voldemort's bogart is his own death. I've I've seen something mm. like this, yeah. So he, because everyone has a bug out. But mm -hmm. however, I actually saw a really interesting theory that links to this this morning. Um, as it was from someone on TikTok. What she called Mia Mia something. I want to say she's Swedish or Dutch or something. She's amazing anyway. Um, I will find out what her name is now. We'll link her. Um, she said, um, on a TikTok this morning that um. People had been kicking off about Neville's bugger being Snape. But realistically, we fear the most what we can't handle in that moment. Yeah, because Hermione's so, bugger was failing. Yeah, absolutely. But as she grew older, would it still be the same? Absolutely not. Neville, <laughs> Neville's bugger was not Bellatrix, but it should have yeah. been. Yeah, because, yeah. But also his biggest fear at that moment was school, was Snape. So that's why it was Snape. Yeah. It wasn't Snape. I mean, Snape was a horrible, horrible person to him. But that, we know, we know why that is. We'll get onto that in the next episode yeah, anyway. next episode. Um, but is that the reason it was Snape? It's because he was at school at the time. So, yeah. Voldemort's biggest fear was death. Mm -hmm. And was that always his biggest fear? Or was Ooh. that after Harry? That's and, I mean, we never see it. We never know. Canon, we don't know. Because he started creating Horcruxes before Harry was born. Mm -hmm. So he knew that death was to be feared for yeah. him. And he wanted to be the most powerful wizard of all time. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. Uh, I enjoy that headcanon. Mm -hmm. I think so. He's always kind of feared death in a way. Mm -hmm. What would your bogart be? My bogart? Oh. oh. You know what? I'm actually kind of scared of the dark. Ooh. Only because, as this is going to sound absolutely weird, um, so if I'm, so going to sleep doesn't bother us at all, but if I'm like fully awake and I'm in somewhere that's like pitch black, my eyes play tricks on us and I start to see people right in front of us and they're like Ooh. walking and it's terrifying. I'm telling you this now, so, so one of our friends, Dick, he has a little passageway in his house that kind of snakes around, the lights don't work and it's going up to his room completely pitch black and I'm walking up these stairs gripping the banister like that and I just see these like um figures like walking past us and other things and I think at one point I just stood in the middle of the steps and, I, and Dick was in his room at this point and I was like can you just open the door can you just open the door please and, and Dick was like why I was like just just open it now I need it <laughs> um, yeah I'm scared of the dark oh yeah not it's... when I'm going to sleep but when I'm wide awake phobias wise I think we discussed this before uh trypophobia I have a, an issue with 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 holes, which means I have an issue with sponges. Mm. But I'm not sure a, a, a bucket of a huge <laughs> sponge is going to be particularly <laughs> that would do scary. It for you. I was going to say, I don't know how a bucket would transform into the dark. Maybe one of my, no, like my personal like fears that's not like a physical one is like maybe um, people not liking us. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I agree with that one as well. Or like I get scared of like, people don't want to talk to us anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. This is why we're friends. <laughs> this is why we're friends. <laughs> we'll never leave each other. <laughs> because we're too scared to. <laughs> No, I think, yeah, I, that that would be something that I would struggle with, I think. Um, yeah. I'm, I don't fear death. No. I have zero fear of death. Um, yeah. As a pagan, I believe in reincarnation. So oh, same. I have, zero, I have zero fear in death in that respect because I'm coming back. Um, but I do fear other people's opinions of me yeah yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah I, I think that that comes probably from being bullied as a child One, yeah yeah um, absolutely and probably being the least intelligent member of my group of friends are we relating here yeah are we relating yeah okay yeah <laughs> i was like i am into i'm an intelligent woman i know i am you are intelligent um but compared to my friends who all went to oxford and cambridge uh yeah um who were all solicitors, lawyers Com- and doctors. Yeah. Compared like... to my brother who's doing astrophysics at university. Yeah. It's easy to feel inferior. Yeah. So inferiority maybe is... I guess so. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But... Yes. So next, what's your next one? <laughs> so my next theory is a bit ridiculous. It's a bit of a silly one. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah. Speaking of boggers. Um, so... Ooh. Nice segue. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> Imagine Tom Riddle in his seventh year commissioned a Slytherin artist to draw him a really neat skull with a snake coming out of it. And he paid more because he may use it as a tattoo later. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the student decades later is looking at the death he does like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy that. This bitch. <laughs> She, he paid for my service, but didn't tell me that it was going to become merch. Yeah. Absolutely. I would have charged more. Absolutely. You've got to charge more for merch. <laughs> Unless you're Erin. She just does mine for free. <laughs> I love you, Erin. <laughs> my final one is, of course, the obvious cursed position <laughs> of the defence against the dark arts. I am interested in this one because... It has been mentioned that even in the books, like the sailor position is cursed. Yes. So yeah, Dippet um, said no to Tom twice. Yeah. And the fan theory slash head canon is that he then cursed the position so that no one could hold the position for more than a year and a half. And I believe that that is canon that no one ever holds it for more oh, than a year and a half. Yeah. There's a new professor every single year. Mm, absolutely. Um, that's literally all I've got written. So, <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> I mean, Snape did apply for it, and even though he had experience, Snape did apply for it, and even though he had experience within the dark arts, Dumbledore was like, no. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Maybe. Dumbledore, do you think Dumbledore knew? Maybe because Snape would have been a fantastic defense against the dark yeah. arts professor because he had the experience. He's an ex Death Eater. Mm-hmm. Um, and and he's worked alongside Voldemort himself. Mm-hmm. So who else has more experience than than Severus Snape? Literally, but Dumbledore's like, no, you're you're still the potions master. I mean, we know that he is a potions oh. master. He's not just a potions professor. Yeah. Professor, he's a potions master. So maybe he just didn't also want to lose a master in potions. True, because I think uh, potions is, is is an acquired skill. Yeah, I mean, from fan fictions I've read, it takes at least five to seven years to acquire potions mastery yeah and uh, i don't know how canon that is but from <laughs> many fan fictions that yeah. i've read well i mean harry wasn't any good at it until he got hold of snape's book mm-hmm. and we know that yes snape was fantastic even as a student was mm-hmm. correcting yeah so maybe maybe that's why dumbledore didn't want him but then also dumbledore it's Dumbledore in it. It's difficult to understand where Dumbledore was coming from ever. Exactly. Yeah. We. we and I've never read that much into Dumbledore really because it's never really interested me. Oh, he's a. Oh, I hate him. I hate, I hate him. Oh, he's a horrible, <laughs> horrible person. I think that's why I haven't read anything about it because I only really read about the people who I like. Hmm. Um. Dumbledore was. 
an accessory to abuse on many levels. Oh, fully. And I don't understand why people can still stan him. Mm -mm. I'm like, oh, he's gay. And I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't mean... But only after the fact. He wasn't yeah. gay in the books. Exactly. JK only said it because... He was an eccentric old man in the books. Yeah. And we come to expect that from an old wizard. Yes, exactly. There were lots of eccentric people in, in Hogwarts. She can't just assume that we, we knew he was gay because he was eccentric. Because it, even in the books, all the, the wizarding folk amongst the model, muggles were wearing really... Eccentric outfits. Extravagant yes. clothes. Yeah, we know even from like the first two chapters of, of book one mm -hmm. that, that, that Vernon's like... What are all these people in cloaks? <laughs> Why is this person wearing a violet hat? Like, what's going on? Literally. So, yeah. I, uh, I do enjoy that theory, though, that Tom mm. may have cursed the position. Yeah, I think it's well within the realms of possibility. It's strange, though, because Quirrell was kind of part Voldemort. Absolutely. <laughs> There's a theory that Voldemort created more Horcruxes. Yes, I read that as well. Than he intended to. Mm -hmm. I mean, Quirrell... Mm -hmm. was literally yeah. part of him. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Quill died. Mm -hmm. Spoiler. Dance again. <laughs> <laughs> we do stand a very Potter musical here. We do, we do. Um, but yeah, totally, completely agree. More Horcruxes than he intended to. Accidental Horcruxes. Yes. Some people have went on to say that maybe... Go on. Voldemort isn't exactly dead because isn't mm. it mentioned that the sword of Gryffindor takes on what it kills? It kills yes. Nagini, which means part of Voldemort's soul is in the sword. Yes, which interested me because then the books are never over. <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> dun dun dun! On that note, I think it's time to end this episode. Yeah. So what can we expect from next episode, Ivy? Next week we are, if, so I haven't watched the fan film yet, but if the fan film is correct, then we are going to be talking about Severus Snape. <gasps> oh. One of your kins. Oh, one of my kins, yes. So we're going to look at Severus Snape and the Marauders fan film. We're going to find a fan fiction to, to match up with that, and we're going to have a look in depth at some fan theories i'm excited for this one hopefully um we will have a guest hopefully we'll have a guest mm. we're not gonna say who because she hasn't replied yet <laughs> fingers crossed we will have a guest for uh for the next episode um and it should be very exciting i'm excited. very very excited <laughs> um so we hope you enjoy this one Yep. Um, we're going to go live on TikTok right now because we we've had a bottle of wine and we're happy and we're together and that doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often. It's happening, oh, I don't know how to say, it's happening like just one, twice a week now. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Once a week. <laughs> Once a week. Once a week. Um, so thank you for joining. Um, leave comments, questions, if you've got any questions yeah. that you would like us to answer um, like in the subscribe. next one. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Share to all of your friends. Um, who may enjoy it talk amongst your friends come back to me with theories uh, like Phoebe did in fact let me finish with this one Phoebe posed a question to me uh, Phoebe mm. is a follower from TikTok um, she posed a question to me do you accents make a difference in spell casting it's very interesting. It is very interesting because we've got that whole Leviosa, Leviosa yes, issue, issue right at the beginning. So, but we also have wizards with accents like Seamus, like McGonagall. Yeah. So, Phoebe went away and had a think about it and spoke to a friend about it um, at length. And she came back to me with a, with a suggestion that I think is pretty canon. So, JK didn't think about the accents other than depicting regional accent, accents as stupid and perceived, no, uh, no, received pronunci pronunciation as being intelligent. So, basically, Seamus is stupid, Hermione's intelligent, yeah. based on the accents. So, someone from Newcastle, like us, we would be, we would, we would be stupid. We wouldn't be very good at magic at all. Um, however... Ron is able to produce um, the correct spell mm -hmm. in Battle with the Troll. Yep. 
um, meaning that either it works explicitly on intention yeah, or luck. But he is also able to cast a Patronus, though. He is, absolutely. But I feel like Patronus is a very simple word. And it is expecto Patronum, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that doesn't really change but a huge again, amount with accent. But then again, the wand chooses the wizard. It does, absolutely. So, so is, is it the wand that is channeling the spell yeah. through the accent? Possibly, because, I mean, we know that Neville wasn't very good in school, but then again, he was using his mother's wand, not his own. Absolutely. But then if we, if we also think about the Malfoys, Draco's wand was chosen by Narcissa, not himself. Yeah. Um... Adding to that is that the the wand used by Lucius Malfoy was handed down from his father. Oh, that is true. It's handed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just a Malfoy wand, yeah. or maybe it just depends on the wizard. Yes, uh, yeah. Again, yeah, because it get, um, Voldemort was still able to use the Elder Wand yes. efficiently, even though it wasn't technically his. Yeah. Um, Although it wasn't his... Like, he was very explicit about that, really, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, it's why the next episode's happening, isn't it? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> but apart there's something in Fantastic Beasts which suggests that the one wasn't even Harry's. It wasn't even yes. Snape's. Yes, yes. Which is, it belongs to Queenie. Mm -hmm. And Queenie Goldstein. I had read this, yes. Yeah. Um, I haven't read much into it. However, that is a theory that I have come across. So yes, if you have any questions, um, any fan theories you want to throw at us explicitly for, for no, specifically for next week um, for Severus Snape and yep. the Marauders, please throw them our way because mm -hmm. um, we would love to, to deep dive into those questions. We'd be very happy to do that. Absolutely. So many theories about the Marauders and Snape alone. Yes, a hundred percent. So please throw out throw your questions, throw your loves, throw your likes, and thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.